Tuesday, evening meditation, 25th week or last week after Pentecost, we're taking our meditations from St. Alphonsus Liguori's book, The Glories of Mary. And we make an act of faith in the presence of God. Nomina Patri, et Filii, et Spiritu Sancti, Amen. Most holy, adorable, and undivided Trinity, one God in three persons. I believe that thou art here present. I adore thee with the deepest humility and render to thee with my whole heart the homage which is due to thy sovereign majesty. Grant me the grace to pray as I ought. Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. O blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God and my mother, I ask for the grace to continue to pray. Christian soul, reflect on these every day of your life. There is one God to glorify, one eternity to prepare for, saints and angels to call upon, one life to use well, one body to mortify, one death to suffer, one hell to avoid, one judgment to confront, one Jesus to imitate, one soul to save, neighbors to edify, one world to be detached from, sins to expiate for, passions to subject to our will, virtues to acquire, one heaven to win. Act of humility, litany of humility. O Jesus, meek and humble of heart, hear me. From the desire of being esteemed, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being loved, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being extolled, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being honored, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being praised, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being preferred to others, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being consulted, Deliver me, Jesus, from the desire of being approved. Deliver me, Jesus, from the fear of being humiliated. Deliver me, Jesus, from the fear of being despised. Deliver me, Jesus, from the fear of suffering rebukes. Deliver me, Jesus, from the fear of being culminated. Deliver me, Jesus, from the fear of being forgotten. Deliver me, Jesus, from the fear of being ridiculed. Deliver me, Jesus, from the fear of being wronged. Deliver me, Jesus, from the fear of being suspected. Deliver me, Jesus, that others may be loved more than I. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it, that others may be esteemed more than I. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it, that in the opinion of the world, others may increase and I may decrease. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it, that others may be chosen and I set aside. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it, that others may be praised and I unnoticed. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it, that others may be preferred to me in everything. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it, that others may become holier than I. Provide that I may become as holy as I should. Jesus, grant me the grace of desire it. Almighty God, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, we ask for your guidance in this, our evening meditation, through the intercession of thy blessed Mother Mary, ever Virgin. Ave Maria, gratia plena dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus, sum benedictus fructus ventris tui Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mata Dei, ora per nobis peccatoribus, nuc in et hora mortis nostre. Amen. In honor of St. Joseph, our guardian angel, and all the saints, we pray, Gloria Patria, Filio, Spiritus Sancto, Sicud Eret in Principio, Nuc et Semper, in Circula, Circularum, Amen. Come, Holy Ghost, fill the hearts of thy faithful, and kindle in them the fire of thy love. Send forth thy spirit, and it shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, who did instruct the hearts of the faithful by the light of the Holy Ghost, grant in that same spirit that we may be truly wise, ever to rejoice in his consolation, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Section 3. How great is the love of our mother for us? If then Mary is our mother, let us consider how much she loves us. The love of parents for their children is a necessary love, and for this reason, as St. Thomas observes, children are commanded in the divine law to love their parents, but there is no command, on the other hand, given to parents to love their children. For love towards one's own offspring is a love so deeply planted in the heart by nature herself that even the wild beasts, as St. Ambrose says, never fail to love their young. It is said that even tigers, hearing the cry of their whelps when they are taken by the hunters, will plunge into the sea to swim after the vessels where they are confined. If then, says our most loving mother, even tigers cannot forget their young, how can I forget to love you, my children? And she adds, even if it should happen that a mother could forget her child, it is not possible that I can forget a soul which is my child. Mary is our mother, not according to the flesh, but by love. Quote, I am the mother of fair love, unquote. Hence, she becomes our mother only on account of the love she bears us. And she glories, says a certain author, in being the mother of love, because, having taken us for her children, she is all love towards us. Who can describe the love of Mary for us miserable creatures? Arnold of 
Carnotenesis says, At the death of Jesus Christ, she ardently desired to die with her son for our sake. So that, as St. Ambrose adds, when her son hung dying on the cross, Mary offered herself to his murderers that she might give her life for us. But let us consider the reasons of this love, for thus we shall better understand how this good mother loves us. The first reason of the great love that Mary bears to men is the great love she bears to God. Love to God and man is contained in the same precept, as St. John has written, quote, This commandment is we have from God, that he who loveth God loveth also his brother. Unquote. So that one increases as the other increases. Hence, what have the saints not done for the love of their neighbor because they have loved God so much? They have gone so far as to expose and lose liberty, and even life, for his salvation. Let us read what St. Francis Xavier did in India, where, for the sake of the souls of those barbarians, he climbed the mountains and exposed himself to innumerable dangers to find those wretched beings in the caverns where they dwelt like wild beasts, and to lead them to God. St. Francis de Sales to convert the heretics of the province of Chalbe, Chablais risked his life by crossing a river every day for a year on his hands and knees upon a frozen beam that he might go to the other side to preach to those stubborn men. St. Paulinus became a slave to obtain liberty for the son of a poor widow. St. Fidelis to bring the heretics of a certain place back to God willingly consented in preaching to them to lose his life. The saints then, because they have loved God so much, have done much for love of the neighbor. But who has loved God more than Mary? She loved God more in the first moment of her life than all the saints and angels have loved him in the whole course of theirs. And as we shall consider at length when we speak of the virtues of Mary, she herself revealed to Sister Mary of the crucifixion that the fire of love which, with which she burned for God was so great that it would in a moment inflame heaven and earth and that in comparison to it, all the flames of the burning love of the seraphim were as cool as breezes. Therefore, as there is none among the blessed spirits who loves God more than Mary, so there is and can be none except God who loves us more than this, our most loving mother. If the love of all mothers for their children, and of all husbands for their wives, and of all saints and angels for their devoted servants, were united, it would not be so great as the love that Mary bears to one soul alone. Father Nuremberg says that the love which all mothers have borne to their children is a shadow when compared with the love which Mary bears to any one of us. Truly, she alone loves us. More, he added, that all the angels and saints united. Moreover, our mother loves us much because we have been commended to her as children by her beloved Jesus, when before expiring he said to her, quote, Woman, behold thy son, unquote, signifying by the person of John, all men, as we have before remarked. These were the last words of her son to her. The last remembrances left by beloved friends at the moment of their death are greatly valued, and the memory of them is never lost. Moreover, we are children extremely dear to Mary because we cost her so much suffering. Those children are much dearer to her mother, who lives she has preserved, whose lives she has preserved. We are those children for whom that we may have the life of grace. Mary suffered the pain of sacrificing the dear life of her Jesus, submitting for our sake to see him die before our eyes in cruel torments. By this great offering of Mary, we were then born to the life of divine grace. So then, we are children very dear to her because we were redeemed at such a cost of suffering. Accordingly, as we read of the love which the Eternal Father has manifested for men by giving his own Son to death for us, quote, God so loved the world as to give his only begotten Son, unquote. As St. Bonaventure remarks, it may be said of Mary also that she so loved us as to give her only begotten Son. And when did she give him to us? She gave him to us, says Father Nuremberg, when first she consented to his death. She gave him to us when others deserted him through hatred or through fear. And she alone could have defended before the judges the life of her son. We can easily believe that the words of so wise and tender a mother would have had great power, at least with Pilate, to induce her to abstain from condemning to death 
a man whom he knew and declared innocent. But no, Mary would not utter even one word in favor of her son to prevent his death upon which our salvation depended. Finally, she gave him to us again at the foot of the cross in those three hours when she witnessed, when she was witnessing his death, because then at the very moment she was offering up for us his life with the deepest grief, and the greatest love for us, at the cost of great trouble and suffering, and with such firmness that if executioners had been wanting, as St. Anselm and St. Antononius tell us, she herself would have crucified him in obedience to the will of the Father, who had decreed he should die for our salvation. And if Abraham showed a similar fortitude in consenting to sacrifice his son with his own hands, we must believe that Mary would certainly have done the same with more resolution as she was holier and more obedient than Abraham. But to return to our subject, how grateful should we be to Mary for an act of so much love, for the sacrifice she made of the life of her son in the midst of so much anguish to obtain salvation for us all. The Lord indeed rewarded Abraham for the sacrifice he was prepared to make of him, of his son Isaac. But what can we render to Mary for the life of her Jesus, as she has given us a son more noble and beloved than the son of Abraham? This love of Mary, says St. Bonaventure, greatly obliges us to love her, seeing that she has loved us more than any other created being loves us, since she has given for us her only son, whom she loved more than herself. And from this follows another reason why we are so much beloved to Mary, because she knows that we have been purchased by the death of Jesus Christ. If a mother should see a servant redeemed by a beloved son of hers, by 20 years of imprisonment and suffering, for this reason alone, how much would she esteem that servant? Mary well knows that her son came upon earth solely to save us miserable sinners, as he himself declared, quote, I have come to save what was lost, unquote. And to save us, he consented to lay down his life for us, quote, becoming obedient unto death, unquote. If Mary, then, had little love for us, she would slightly value the blood of her son, which was the price of our salvation. It was revealed to St. Elizabeth the nun that Mary, from the time she was in the temple, was always praying that God would quickly send his son to save the world. Now, how much more certainly must we believe that she loves us after she has seen us so greatly prized by her son that he deigned to purchase us at such a cost? And because all men have redeemed by Jesus, Mary loves and favors all. She was seen by St. John clothed with the sun. Quote, and there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun. Unquote. She said to be clothed with the sun because as, quote, there is no one that can hide himself from his heat. Unquote. So there is no one living on the earth who is deprived of the love of Mary from the heat of the sun as it exclaimed by the venerable Raymond Jordan who through humility called himself the idiot. That is, from the love of Mary. And who, says St. Anthony, can comprehend the care which this loving mother has of us all. Therefore, to all she offers and dispenses her mercy. For our mother has desired the salvation of all and has cooperated with her son in the salvation of all. Concluding prayer, I give thee thanks, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, for the light which thou now bestowest upon me I make a firm purpose of my will that I may, in uniformity with your divine will, O Triune God, keep my resolutions and keep them well, for the love of thee and thy mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary, so that through her intercession I may receive by her loving hands the grace to be ever faithful to my resolutions, my state in life, and rule of life, now and till the hour of my death. I give thee thanks, O God, for the patience with which thou hast hitherto borne with me. I see that although I forgot thee, thou didst not forget me, I am sorry, my sovereign good, for having turned my back upon thee, and I am now resolved to give myself entirely to thee. And why should I delay, that thou mayest abandon me, and that death may find me as miserable and ungrateful as I have been even until now? No, my God, I will no more offend thee, but will love thee. I love thee, O infinite goodness. Give me perseverance and thy holy love. I ask for nothing more. Mary, refuge of sinners, intercede for all the holy souls in purgatory, and for all poor sinners, particularly myself. Nomina Patria Filii, Spiritus Sancti. Amen. 
Have a blessed evening, O slaves of Mary.